All right, so hey everyone. Uh, today I want to um, address a comment I received on my circularity video. Uh, they asked uh, why when I was making uh, full kind of rotations with my thumbstick, uh, why my thumbstick was smooth and their controllers was uh, would snag at the axes. And uh, this will be a visual demonstration of that. Uh, the reason is uh, generally because the thumbstick uh, input has been altered. Uh, unfortunately I don't have a hand cam uh, so that you can't see any uh, see how I'm moving the stick physically and see how um, that may differ from uh, what's being shown on this device monitor but uh, what you're seeing here is an accurate representation of it so just uh, pay attention to how I'm moving uh, this and then compare it to the other controllers I'll show. So here's me making a nice smooth transition uh, just making large circles with the thumbstick. This is the Xbox One controller I used uh, for that circularity video with the worn uh, sticks, so I'm leaning pretty far in the corners. So, full movements. Here's some small circles. Bobbing around uh, the axes. All right, so the first controller I'm going to look at is the Logitech F310. So um, you can see uh, that here and making full rotations. You can see that it snags on these axes. It stops just completely. And when I try to make small circles, either nothing happens or it seems pretty well locked to um, the axes. If I try bobbing around the dead zone, you can see that nothing happens or just small movements occur. This is happening because this controller has a dead zone applied to it and an axial dead zone. So small movements you make with a controller uh, won't output anything. Um, and the reason you saw movement is because I was bleeding outside of the dead zone. Um, axial dead zones, uh, you know, restrict movement all across the axes. axes. So uh, you have to move the stick uh, far enough to break out of both um, axis dead zones before you start seeing uh, diagonal movement. And as you can see, once I break out of that, then it's uh, smooth, but I fall back in it, then there's nothing, nothing, and then uh, there's movement again. So this is uh, bad because one, um, games set up their own dead zones, so, and this will stack with it. So if a game uses a 20% dead zone, uh, it will feel much larger because this is adding on to that. Additionally, because this is uh, an axial dead zone being applied to the controller, even if a game uses a nice perfectly circular dead zone, it's going to feel like an axial dead zone. It might be feel like a rounded square dead zone in that case, uh, because it has to go through um, um, this, this controller input first. So uh, this can really negatively affect um, games with that. It'll make uh, it so that you can never play at a 0% dead zone and that you're angles are always going to be restricted, even in games that are perfectly set up or, and give you all the options you want. So the next controller I'm going to look at is an Xbox 360 Afterglow. I unfortunately don't have any official uh, 360 controllers uh, anymore, so I can't say if these you know, this is accurate to um, the official models, but making full movements you can see that it slows down around the axes, but doesn't stop. And 
And if I try to make uh, small circles, you can see based on the values changing that um, there is movement, um, but it's uh, reduced. And uh, you can see that it seems to be a little more biased towards um, the axis lines. And if I try bobbing around um, the axes, you can see that it is moving up and down, but uh, in much smaller movements than I was making with the Xbox One controller. Uh, what seems to be happening here is that um, there's no dead zone being applied. However, the axes um, are being altered. So a curve is being applied um, to the axis values. And this is making it so um, the values start slower and then build up. Uh, the issue here is that this can make your um, diagonals more biased to cardinal directions. And um, make it so that you have to overcorrect before you start seeing a uh, diagonal movement occur. Um, so again, even if you have a nice uh, perfectly circular dead zone with full diagonal movement, um, it, you will feel more restricted even though it's not actually locking it like with an axial dead zone. Dead zone. Additionally, uh, since it starts slower all around, um, this can make dead zones feel larger because the input is starting slower. Uh, this would really depend on the curve. I have no idea. I can't like physically measure um, how much I'm moving the stick uh, compared to what the um, input is showing. But uh, this can make it feel uh, dead zones feel larger than they actually are. Um, or it does functionally increase it um, because you have to move the stick further to get the same uh, value you would get uh, if the curve wasn't altered like this. So uh, generally in both cases, uh, this is from the sticks being altered or the, the stick output being altered in some way. And uh, this is generally bad practice unless you're uh, going to give options to control this, though axis-based um, dead zones and acceleration uh, aren't really good in, in most cases anyway. Um, but yeah, generally this isn't a good thing. But I'm going to switch back to the Xbox One controller just to again show how I was moving. Alright, so again, this is a full stick tilt movement, so it doesn't lock to the axes. Small movements, small circles right around the axes. So that's really how it should be. So uh, that about covers things. So thanks for watching, and everyone, have a good rest of your day.